First tonight, devastation in paradise. Leaders now say 67 people have died from the massive wildfires in Maui. The extent of the damage and loss of life still coming to light as many return to their communities now burned to the ground. The fires are Hawaii's worst natural disaster in decades. Buildings damaged and destroyed, homes leveled, and cars burned to a shell of metal. Tonight, search teams are scouring the island for survivors and those who couldn't make it out, especially in the hardest hit town of Lahaina. Many people on the island say they receive little or no warning. Now, a couple from Gulfport tells us tonight they received no alerts as they fled the flames. They are still on Maui tonight, only on 10 Tampa Bay, their harrowing journey that began with happiness and ended with heartache in Hawaii. It was for her 40th birthday, but we got engaged. It began with a moment of pure bliss. Lahaina's right around that curve, right there. But quickly turned to a scene of horror. It's a war zone up there. It's awful. After flying from Gulfport to Maui for a surprise engagement, Joe Quick and Louise Brown came face to face with a ferocious fire that consumed paradise. The morning of the fire, which we didn't know what was going on, we woke up and there was no power in our room. It's five in the morning, no power, and we don't figure high winds. It had been 50, 60 mile hour winds the day before. And we decided to venture out of the room. We heard that the roads were closed, but we wanted to see how far we could get. And we got in the Jeep and drove towards Lahaina. We got about two lights down and cars were just backing up. And I looked at Louise, my fiance, and said, let's turn around. I'm like, the further we get into this, we might not be able to get back. And I looked up and you could just see the smoke starting to fill up the sky. They returned to their room to grab their belongings. They had roads blocked and we had tried to get out a few times. But people were basically trapped on both ends up there. You couldn't get out through Lahaina way, you couldn't get out through the north way that night. But I think we literally got out the last chance we could have. With no power and no cell phone reception, they had no idea of the scope of this disaster. When I got cell phone reception, all the texts started coming through from our families. You know, are you guys okay? Where are you? Where are you? We've been trying to get a hold of you. And that's when we realized, wow, this is actually very, very serious right now. For the past three days, Joe and Louise have been surrounded by people who've lost everything, including those they love. You know, everywhere we talk to locals here, you know, they're missing friends. I mean, you see the heartbreak, you see the pain in people's faces. I mean, I, I feel it right now. I think just being from Florida and, and dealing with living what we dealt with the hurricane last year, I mean, we evacuated our house. We had a warning, though, and these people here didn't have any type of warning that this was coming. It's very hard to process how close we really were to something that was so, so terrifying. Yeah. After a number of flight cancellations, Joe and Louise are scheduled to return home to Tampa Bay this weekend. They have witnessed a lot of heartache, and tonight they're hoping viewers in our area will find a way to help those in Hawaii. We do have a list of ways to help right now on 10tampabay.com.